Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Hope you're having at least moments of wellness, well-being amidst everything else. <sighs> so today I wanted to share, I've got a new insight happened and, um, some people find value in hearing about um, <laughs> these ideas as they emerge. So I wanted to share this really cool idea. So it's a strategy. It's a strategy about dealing with the part of living with long-term chronic illness in which uh people find themselves in these repeated cycles of they don't have enough capacity to do to get all the things done that you need to get done in life uh and the things you want to get done and so there tends to develop, at least for some people, the cycling of when there is a window of possibility, when there is some capacity, some cognitive function, mental clarity, physical energy, other physical capacities, low enough pain, whatever it is, the particular uh, variables an individual is dealing with. There's enough of enough of the components become available so that a window of possibility opens up. How to spend this window of possibility. One thing that happens is one thing that can happen is that um, there's a tendency to want to get as much done as possible within that window of possibility. Unfortunately for some of us that can lead to um, overdoing it, overexertion, overextension, um, which contributes at least in part to a next down cycle uh, a crash phase and then um, when that happens overextension during a period of possibility and um, uh, so when it's overextension and then the crash phase tends to be at least in my experience deeper and longer than it otherwise would have been so I set that aside for the moment and bring us to this strategy. So here's a monthly planning calendar that I use. You can see some of the month has already gone by. And um, the strategy is that after I have a trip to town scheduled, something which is going to involve uh, chemical exposure, uh, which is one of my biggest health uh, capacity users, um, then I know this is one of the times when there is some predictability in what's going to happen. So I know there's going to be downtime. So what I do is I put a pencil slash across in at this time, 14 days afterwards, because um, right now, depending on what exposures are and how they just hit my, the systems, my systems at this time, um, it's a 10 to 14 day recovery cycle. So um, by putting this in pencil, I can, it's, it's a reminder. It's a reminder to me that this is uh, a, a recovery time, likely time that's going to be needed for recovery. Um, I've tended to think of it as downtime and when I can 
have it be a designated rest day. It's, it's much easier for me to accept in the radical acceptance sense of the word that this is what's needed. This is what's happening. Rest becomes the primary rest and recovery becomes the primary um, goal, if you will, for that day. And so if stuff that happens to be on a to-do list gets done, then that's like gravy. That's extra. So that's fun. Um, however, I repeatedly find myself going back into the wanting to get things done and then starting to do stuff when there's capacity and, uh, and then getting caught up in the doing and getting stuff done. Um, so let me just check my notes here. Okay. So the insight that came this morning was that this strategy, it's not only about scheduling the time that's likely needed or possibly needed for recovery. Um, it's also a sustainability strategy sustainability. Um, so I, the emotional shift and the mental shift that happened when I started thinking of this for the first time, or I don't know, maybe I've thought of it before. It was, uh, it, a shift happened anyway. A sustainability strategy. So in the situation with, so it becomes not simply about, oh, I'm not going to be able to do stuff on this day or 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 this day. And it goes on into the next month. Oh no, I'm going to have to do rest, which of course, resting is doing something. It's not a passive activity. However, it's okay. Wait, so it's not simply about, um, downtime is likely needs to be happening. So don't schedule other big stuff like exposures, which I ended up, um, doing here for two days from now here i did it and then it took hours for me to come to clarity and then i needed to sleep on it to be sure um well actually just because i needed sleep um to cancel this appointment which was a going away going out of the house um you can see it's on a a uh, pencil crossed out day which i had um ignored when I made that appointment because guess what the day I wanted to try to do it when I was going out already was um, they didn't have any appointments except for the very first thing in the morning when I'm not awake enough and functional enough to get myself out to town so I went into scarcity mode when is it possible and the only time they had for an afternoon appointment was two days from now um, okay. So, um, okay. So back to the sustainability part is that um, it helps me get out of the just this moment reactions and strategizing that can take place. It's like, what do I need to do in this moment? I need to rest, but this thing gets, needs to get done and the laundry and the mail has been sitting in the box for a week and whatever else it is. Um, that it creates sustainability by utilizing that to 
preserve capacity. <sighs> There's the phone, Dagnabbit. thought I turned off all the things that make sound. Um, okay, it went to voicemail. All right, so, wow. Doesn't take a lot to get the... Mind distracted. Okay, so... Okay, so the hope is that this can be. So the goal becomes a longer term focus rather than immediate in the moment um, wondering and possibly worrying about what am I going to do today? What is today going to be like? How am I going to use today? If I look at it as more of a, in this case, it would be like, um, the next two weeks into the next month that extended outward, that this is one of the areas where I can do something about the degree of unpredictability and variability in functional capacities, as opposed to all the places where I can't, where I don't have influence, where the there's no choice in whether there's capacity or not. So this is one of the relatively fewer areas where I can do something. So that gives me a sense of hope and possibility that when I can remember this strategy, that it's about giving me more overall amount quantity and quality of functional capacity in my life in general. And of course, it's an investment in the future. It's actions I can take now, planning and actions in the now that are an investment in future possibility. Um, there's a lot of different pieces that are coming together in this. Um, it reminds me in part of the strategy of of uh, okay, this is going on too long already. So this is this is. Uh, Okay, that's enough. Um, I'll just keep talking otherwise. So um, it feels like a, it is for me a very significant in this moment, a very significant crystallization of multiple ideas coming together uh, 
and um, helping me develop a, uh, a next level of strategy. This is built on multiple other strategies. Anyway, it's a part of what it is, is that it's a change. What happened is a change in mental orientation. So um, it's very empowering um, to come to clarity around places where I do have the possibility of choice and action. Um, to help shepherd, to preserve uh, and expand the capacity that's available within the existing circumstances. Boy, I can't. It's hard to convey in words how meaningful it is for me. It reminds me of the serenity prayer. May I? Have the courage to change the things I can. The serenity to accept the things I cannot change and the discernment to know the difference. So this speaks to the place where there is the possibility of change that I can do. So much of debilitating chronic illness is around working on the acceptance, at least for me, the acceptance of what I cannot do. So in the face of such uh, uncertainty and unpredictability and limitations. To have found a way to think of, to contextualize that strategy really helps me feel more empowered and, um, and I believe it, I trust uh, based on past experience that it will make it more possible for me to respect and honor scheduling the um, times when the recovery phase is likely still going to be in process and that I need to respect that as a more fundamental need. Um, kind of don't like quoting this uh, saying that there is some truth that is pointed to in the saying that if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And the, and the part of that, you know, like many short sayings, it's not literally true in many cases. If you read it as a literal, succinct statement with a period on the end, it points to a statement of wisdom without health, the capacity, health capacity to do something, then doing things at some point, it becomes literally impossible, literally impossible. And, and because it's not an absolute negotiating the space of where how to navigate when, when there is some capacity 
how to learn how to use that sustainably, more sustainably, is a challenge that um, any of the people with chronic illness I know find um, a great challenge. I hope that was helpful for you. It was helpful for me to share. I feel excited by the possibility of integrating this new way of thinking of and relating to those uh, pencil lines in my calendar. Uh, this month it's taken up so much of it because instead of trying to only get to town once a month, uh, every four to four and a half weeks to five weeks, um, I needed to recalibrate. So three weeks and this past cycle has been a particular, the, um, deeper downtime than I've experienced in several cycles. So uh, looking at all those uh, blocked off days, didn't want to have to stick to that. Okay. Thank you again for listening. May you have many moments of relative wellness and ease in your life today. Namaste.